chemistry, right? We're going to go over glassware, most common agents, precursors, how to effectively avoid them, decon and safety measures, right? So I think it's really important that senior soldiers understand chemistry. I think that's very important and that you guys know what scientific notation is and you guys understand that aspect. We're fucking chemical nerds. We should be proud of that shit. Sweat, it's going to be okay. You look at yourself. I was more on the L side when I took any science class. So, well, you'll learn what I feel is going to be for. Just letting so you know. What the fuck? And biochem. I failed that also. Well, I'm going to make you pass it. Turn that shit off. In college, though. I did do it. I failed it in college. That makes me feel better. That does make me feel better. It was just really hard, and I could not understand numbers. <coughs> I passed chem, and I passed bio. And those were like my highest scoring classes. I've done chem one and, and two. A and P one and two, Gen Bio one, uh, Bio two. Oh, God, God, been a lot. And that's all been since I've been to the army. All right, chemistry is the study of the composition, properties, and interactions of matter. You got two types of properties, right? You got physical properties and you have chemical properties. A physical property is a characteristic not associated with the change in the chemical composition, right? If something is fucking hard. That's a physical property, right? A physical change is a change in the state or property of matter without any accompanying changes in the chemical composition. So at the end of a physical change, it's still the same matter. It's just in a different form now. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, physical property examples, you got your density, color, hardness, melting and boiling points, and electrical conductivity, right? Uh, chemical property is either the changing of one form of matter into another or an inability to change. So these are things that are inherent to whatever piece of matter that you are dealing with. Uh, chemical property examples, you got flammability, toxicity, acidity, and other reactions. So it's it's... Sometimes it gets kind of close, right? Flammability versus boiling points, right? Flammability, that's chemical, but boiling points and melting points, those are physical. The difference here is that the flammability can actually change the chemical structure, whereas a melting or a boiling point doesn't, right? Ice will melt, uh, but some things can spontaneously combust given the right environments, and that doesn't have anything to do with their melting or boiling points. Make sense? Chemical changes are those that produce one or more different types of matter than the original. So, if uh, something is very acidic, when it uh, starts reacting, it can decompose into two different types you mean of like, matter. Uh, the and the gas. Exactly. That's a chemical property, that's a chemical change. See, it's what you know. Alright, periodic table of the elements. All right. These are your metals. These are mostly man-made elements, all right? Your metalloids, your non-metals over here, and then your noble gases right here, right? Thing with these, these are almost all Amer uh, man-made. That's what got me in fifth grade. Is it? The bottom yeah. part. That bottom part, right? Yeah. <laughs> because these are all, pretty much all radioactive in some way, shape, or form. Well, that could, yeah. So you got your atomic number, you got, it breaks it down here, right? You got your atomic number up there, the symbol for it, the atomic mass, and its name. So atomic mass, that's how much that specific one weighs in atomic mass units, right? AMUs. So thallium here weighs 204.4 AMU. Make sense? What's up? That behavior, like, that's heavier than hydrogen, right? Individually, none of these atoms are very heavy, like compared to the, the world, but their atomic mass comparatively can be a lot heavier. For instance, aluminum is heavier than hydrogen, but aluminum is not as heavy as gallium. Make sense? Now your atomic mass 
is everything inside that atom. So that's your protons, neutrons, and electrons, which uh, neutrons weigh almost nothing. So we don't really concern ourselves with those too much, but your protons and your neutron and your, elect and your electrons, those are important. Atomic number, that's the number of protons, right? Atomic mass, that's gonna be your protons, electrons, and neutrons all together. Make sense? So how many protons does oxygen have? Eight. Eight. There you I go. Almost <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. How many protons does xenon have? Noble gas. Like eight. Xe noble gas. Fifty-four. Fifty-four. There you go. See, not too complicated, right? And again, I was gonna go. There's a lot of stuff that you can talk about with the periodic table. For uh, I want to go over like conductivity and a lot of other shit, but. Okay, what's this, uh, it says at the little bottom right, it's like three different shades of pink, then it skip. So what am I looking? You said bottom right? Yeah, the periodic. This is the bottom row. Yeah, bottom row. Uh, it's like, it's like pinkish. Oh, these? The metalloids? Yeah, the other one. A little more. Last row. Yeah, well, I forgot what those were. Those are all radioactive isotopes. Okay. I knew they were. Mm -hmm. Also, man-made right here. They're not naturally occurring. Tweet. Scientific notation, very important. Make the large numbers small and make the small numbers manageable. Count the zeros. Mm -hmm. Count the zeros. So, with a negative exponent, in order to get a negative exponent, we move the decimal to the right. We start here. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 to negative 9. Now if we go here, this tells us that a negative exponent, we're going to move it to the left to expand it out. Make sense? Really, really easy, easy stuff. I've seen scientific notation since high school. Don't worry, college project it worse. It was all over my physics class. Yeah, that's what I just finished, so. I actually got a 99 physics. I don't know how I did my physics teacher was stupid smart. Hello, Sean Gillard. He, did, he was not qualified to be a, a high school teacher. He had to get a master's degree in physics. So he's overqualified. Huh? He to be here. So I thought you knew I was. He used to be a government contractor. Yeah, it was everything was going. Yeah, it's just me here at the sergeant. He gets confused why I was not by myself. Because we thought you were there by yourself because we thought he was, was taking Robinson over to his appointment. Yeah. I was like, oh. Accountability, very important. Right? So, so I got something in my fucking teeth. The nucleus here, right? Mm -hmm. So we got 10 to the negative 15 meters. We got 10 to the negative 10 meters, right? This is about five times, the nucleus is about five times smaller compared to the rest of the uh, atom. Make sense? I forgot what I had these up here for, but basically there's a shit ton of them in there and there's a shit ton of them in here. But you use scientific notation to help quantify how many atoms would be in there and make it easier to understand. You know what blew my mind away was that it's only five more, but it's so much bigger. Mm-hmm. And mostly empty space. That's why math never connected to my brain. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's like one letter, one two. Bonds. You got ionic bonds and then you got covalent bonds. So a couple of differences here, right? And an ionic bond, an element that, that is gonna be between elements that readily lose electrons combines with an atom that readily accepts electrons. Right? Uh, it's often a metal and a non-metal together are often gonna be ionic, melt at higher temperatures, and they boil at higher temperatures. And that's because the because of the ionic nature of the bond where the electrons are not being shared, they're being stolen basically. Uh, they are not electrically conductive. And go back over here. So metals and non-metals, right? 
got all your medals over here, and you got your non-medals here. Uh, so you got sodium chloride, right? That's a very that's salt, right? Sodium chloride, and it is going to be an ionic bond. You got your sodium over here, right? And you got your chlorine over here. Now there's this octet rule in chemistry. So we got chlorine, we got sodium, right? Now the, the octet rule is that every atom wants to have eight electrons in their cloud, right? Because remember, when we go back down to the basics, in the nucleus, we have what? Protons and neutrons. Exactly, and surrounding that, it is the electron cloud, okay? Which, there's a new theory out there that electrons behave more as a wave than they do in a cloud as has previously been believed, but that's not important right now. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, you got your atom here. So you got your nucleus, right? And inside the nucleus, we got all these little atoms and all these little protons and neutrons. But then surrounding it, in right now, in circles, in a little cloud, with different levels, levels are all of the electrons. Now in the outermost shell, because each one of these is a shell, making up the cloud, there are certain levels of how many they're supposed to be. It goes P1, P2, S1, so on and so forth. In all of your P's, there's two. So you become a college professor after this, you should explain what my biology teacher put in. <laughs> <laughs> in your math. I'm just saying the truth. We asked this question, and she would just be like, it's a shell. I'm like, but is it all the same shell? No, there are multiple yeah, levels. Yeah, but she would just be like, she wouldn't do that. She's got your twos, and then you have Yeah, some she'd just be like, it's all P's. I'm eight. like, that doesn't make sense in this equation. Oh. But then it goes to four, and then six, and then eight, and it just keeps going, right? Because remember, we got, we go all the way up to fucking 118 down here, right? So once each shell gets filled, you go on to the next one. But then that last shell isn't going to be filled. And so it's going to take from the others. Now, each of these groups, one, two, blah, 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 all the way over to here, Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? That's how you can remember that a little bit easier. Over here, these noble gases, they're called that because they're, it's called the valence shell, right? The valence shell is the very last shell. Theirs is full. They're satisfied. They've got eight. Everyone else wants to get to eight. Right? And so chlorine, where is it at? It's over here, right? How many electrons does it have? Is it going to have in this valence shell? It's going to have seven. Exactly. It's going to have seven. So chlorine's over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? Sodium. How many is it going to have? One. One. Because this is an ionic bond between a metal and a non-metal, chlorine's a hungry, thirsty bitch and is greedy. It is going to take that electron so that it is full and it satisfies the octet rule. And that's how those ionic bonds break that work out. And because chlorine is taking it, now sodium is just kind of sad and lonely. Now when you have ionic bonds, because of the nature of the bond where chlorine is taking it from sodium, they are going to be, they're going to have a higher melting temperature and they're going to have a higher boiling temperature because the bond is stronger than a covalent bond. They're not going to be very electrically conductive because of the strength of that bond. With a weaker electro, with weaker bonds, they're going to have more electrical conductivity. Sodium chloride melts at 801 degrees Celsius and it boils at 1413 degrees Celsius. Versus water, which is a covalent bond, which melts at zero degrees Celsius and boils at 100, right? So let's go over water. Dihydrogen monoxide, right? 
hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. Oxygen has how many electrons in its valence shell? Six. Here we go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. What's hydrogen got? One. One. One over here, one over here. Now, because hydrogen, right, non metal, oxygen, non metal, nine times out of ten is going to be a covalent bond. There are exceptions, there are exceptions to every rule in chemistry, but it's going to be covalent nine times out of ten. And what's going to happen here is they're going to share. The non-metals are in the same category, so they're more friendly, right? They're willing to work with each other. So these bonds are going to share. So remember, we have these electron clouds, right? So oxygen's cloud is going to merge with the hydrogen, and then those electrons are going to go back and forth between the oxygen and the hydrogen molecules, each one, right? Think of it just like, that almost looks like a smile. Just like a little circle going back and forth in between them. And because of that, because it's not staying with one, it is a much weaker bond. So covalent bonds are elements that consist of discrete neutral molecules. Atoms share electrons, and they're mostly combinations of nonmetals. All right, because that they because they share, that's why they are not as stable, and that is why they are not as strong. Ionic bonds are not, electric, are not electric inductive as a solid because ions are unable to flow until melted. Metal plus nonmetal and nonmetal combination is a simple approach. Does this breakdown kind of make sense? Yeah. Can cool. you just explain everything? I could have passed everybody in class. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, I had C's got almost zero. Hey, C's get degrees. Uh, this is going over nomenclature, how to name them, right? So you start off with, yeah. So we got our ionic, right? Metal and non-metal. Metal forms one type of ion only. This would be a cation, right? Cation or an anion. We got the name of the cation for the metal, the base name of the anion for the non-metal, it gets us ide, right? Remember, I, this is calcium iodide. That is iodine. But because it's like this, it's calcium iodide. That's just the naming convention. That's just what a whole bunch of people from a long time ago that are all dead and fossilized decided. And that's what we go with.